small co contributions from the WHO, UNAIDS, the Office of the uh, United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, as well as for uh, the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent uh, Societies. With regard to ensuring access and availability of controlled substances for medical and scientific purposes, I would like to recall that my predecessor, Ambassador of Belgium, Gislain Dup, uh, launched an awareness raising initiative last year. Let me provide you with some examples of our interactions with Geneva based organizations. In March 2023, a joint call to action was held by the Commission and the treaty mandated UN entities namely UNODC, WHO, INCB, featured a statement by, by the Director General of WHO. In June 22, um, a side event on the topic of availability and access was organized in New, New York on the margins of uh, an ECOSOC meeting, featuring the participation of representatives of WHO and UNAIDS. In September 2022, Ambassador Dup organized an event in Geneva to raise awareness uh, for the international drug policy commitments on improving availability and access to, to control uh, substances for medical and scientific uh, purposes. Again, the Director General of WHO uh, and the uh, United Nations Special Rapporteur to the Right of Health uh, were, uh, participated in that event. Uh, I also wish to highlight that some Geneva-based organizations will also organize side events in the margins of, of this uh, session, covering different topics related to the world drug problem, such as WHO, the Universal Postal Union, and the Uni International Federation of the Red, and Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. And also remember that uh, yesterday, we took action on the recommendations presented by the WHO in order to include on the list of uh, uh, controlled substances uh, seven new new substances, and that's that's the work that we 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 we, we carry out uh, jointly. Uh, each one obviously complying with the, with the, our own um, obligations uh, that come from the treaties. Thank you very much for uh, the uh, very extensive answer. Um, I hope we can get this uh, answer also in uh, writing, printing, so we can share with uh, <laughs> we can share with our membership because some of those uh, answers are really uh, very extensive and specific. So. As I said, we are we are totally transparent Good. in Thank those you. those issues and, and and also very very supportive of the of your work. There is no problem. In this. Thank you very much. Okay, we have next question from Wendy International uh, from Sweden, uh, from Espern, please. Or is yours? Thank you for giving me the floor. And last night, uh, Mr. Ambassador, you challenged the civil society to have long term goals. I thank you for this. But now to the present question here. Much of the current discourse about drug policies ignores a strong and accelerating alignment between addiction for profit industries. What can the Commission do to better reflect the growing knowledge about the strong links between addiction for profit industries? And how can a more nuanced and scientific understanding of the commercial determinants of health drivers of availability and increased normalization of addictive products be addressed by the Commission going forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, as you know, an effective drug control framework should strike the right balance between the control of diversion and prevention of non-medical use of controlled drugs. On one hand, and the availability and accessibility of controlled substances for medical purpose, on the other hand. Uh, the, this dual responsibility is at the core of international drug control system. The Commission serves as a platform for stakeholders to come together and share their, pers their, their perspectives, experiences, and lessons learned. It is important to acknowledge that there are diverse views on these issues. And it is through constructive dialogue and collaboration that we can identify effective solutions. 
the annual thematic discussions on the implementation of international uh, drug policy commitments provide an excellent, op excellent opportunity for member states and other stakeholders, including of, obviously so civil society, to bring their knowledge on this matter to the attention of the Commission. Uh, to the Commission and, 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 and st stakeholders at play. Uh, at the thematic discussions, good examples of scientific evidence-based drug treatment and health services have been shared and challenges related to response, not in conformity with the three international drug control conventions, have also been discussed. The Commission has emphasized the importance of scientific evidence as the basis for informed policy decisions in many of its resolutions. It, is, uh, it has expressed the view that the world drug problem remains a common and shared responsibility, responsibility that should be addressed in a multilateral setting through effective and increased international cooperation and that demands an engaged multidisciplinary, mutually reinforced, balanced, scientific evidence-based and comprehensive approach. Thank you very much. Uh, we shall proceed with the next uh, question, uh, which is from Students for Sensible Drug Policy International. So we have representative here. So Rosin, please. Yeah, the Vienna NGO Committee on Drugs is in the process of establishing a NGO youth working group, which would be a good opportunity for engagement between the Commission, the Youth Forum and youth led civil society more broadly. Uh, has there been any progress on expanding youth involvement and the involvement of youth organizations in the Commission? And would it be possible to meet with you to talk about that more? Um, thank you. Thank you very much for this question. Uh, the Commission is well aware, um, very much appreciate that civil society plays an important role, including in promoting the involvement of youth in drug related matters. It is crucial to make young people voices heard by global policy, make, policy makers. The Cindy Youth, Youth Forum allows young people to exchange ideas, visions, and different perspectives on how to better protect the health and well being of their peers and provide them with an opportunity to convey their joint messages to the global level policymakers when they report back uh, on the outcome of the Youth Forum. Since 2012, the, the Youth Forum on the, the U.S. ODC Youth Initiative is being held in the margins of the regular sessions of the Commission, ensuring a platform for youth to share their experiences, ideas, and creativity. While the Youth Forum is not part of the formal C in the proceedings, youth have traditionally reported back to the formal plenary meeting uh, on the results of the forum. I understand that the BNNGO Committee on Drugs supports youth-led civil society organizations on matters related to drugs and youth empowerment and acts as an interlocutor for NGO with the CND. The Commission values the important role the uh, Vienna, Vienna NGO Committee plays in coordinating the cooperation and facilitating constructive dialogues between NGO and the Commission. The Commission will continue to work with the, the Vienna NGO committee on this uh, in the in this vein in the future. Uh, uh, allow me to say something uh, to add something to 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 this uh, answer. Uh, yesterday uh, we presented we we, we had the, the report uh, in the in the in the plenary and it was a very very touching moment to see how clear how clear uh, this this group of uh, judge representatives uh, uh, have um, how clear they they how to say that um, how clear they can uh, uh, present their ideas, their visions, their perspectives, their fears uh, in a very 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 well uh, crafted and very well. Uh, uh, drafted uh, way and uh, and also how they they present with the not with the um say um, naturaleza uh, alguien um in a in a very natural way in a very natural way uh, 
what they think about. Uh, I, I, I said yesterday also that that speech was the best possible defense that I heard in my whole life uh, for one of the key elements of the fight against drugs, at uh, this prevention. I think I am totally sure that if we manage to have global uh, effective uh, policies uh, for prevent, we could really stop the spreading of drugs. And we really, really, really will be closer to, to solve the issue of the fight against drugs. We have been for more than 50 years giving giving priority to one of the to one of the of the key policies to stop the supply to to fight against the supply but we we uh, do not give give gave during those, during that time uh the same the same priority to the to the prevention side and that's why the world is in this specific issue the war is the way it is we see we, we we see every year when the World Drug Report is presented that all the numbers are higher, higher consumption, higher production, higher seizures, higher deaths, higher, higher, higher. Every every indicator is higher, and that's why it's not because we are not fighting against the supply side. We have been investing billions, trillions of dollars every year in order to curb the supply side, but we neglected during the to all those years, we neglected the, the demand side, the prevention. And that's, that's really important. That's really the way to, fin to, to, to really solve this, this problem. Thank you very much uh, for taking too long for that. Oh, thank you. That was excellent answer. So. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I represent organization in, which work in the field of prevention, so I completely agree with you, <laughs> with your statement. <laughs> so thank you. I was also present yesterday at the kickoff meeting of our um, working group, youth working group. So I also uh, must uh, say that this is a, really a pleasure to listen to young people, how they articulate their arguments and uh, statements. And I, I look forward to collaborate with this working group. And I, I, I can just wait for great results from this working group uh, to improve also youth engagement in civil society organizations. So that's also very important, not just at the global drug policy, but we as a civil society organizations, we have to engage young people as soon as possible in our work. So thank you very much. So let's proceed to the next question uh, from International Drug Policy Consortium. Uh, Alice is here with us, so please, the floor is yours. Hi, good morning. Um, civil society participation in Vienna <clears throat> has greatly improved over the past decade and is now held up as a good example across the UN. We hope that it will remain the case in the future, especially for high level political events on drugs. In this context, how will you ensure the active, engaged and meaningful engagement of civil society in the 2024 midterm review of the 2019 Ministerial Declaration? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, indeed, the Commission has uh, made great efforts to become the inclusive platform. It is today. It is today. Um, we very much appreciate the contributions of civil society organizations with their hands-on experience to the work on the co of the Commission. Moving forward, including for the 2024 midterm review, the COSOV rules of procedure will, of course, continue to apply and civil society stakeholders with ECOSOC consultative status are expected to continue participating as observers in the formal seeing dimities with the Vienna NGO committee acting as a coordinator. It is important to ensure transparent and inclusiveness in the review process. We will work to ensure that all relevant stakeholders, including civil society organizations, have, in line with the past practice, access to information and are provided with opportunities to provide their inputs and perspectives. 
we recognize civil society organizations are essential for the review um, to be inclusive, transparent, and comprehensive. Uh, we look forward to working with you in the lead up of the midterm review. Uh, uh, allow me to say uh, something, uh, to, to add something. Uh, we just uh, uh, finished the negotiations of the modality resolution for the midterm review. It was a good fight, let's say that, uh, in order to 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 keep uh, what uh, the NGOs have until now. And uh, I expect really um, very much your total involvement in this thing. Uh, I, I, I don't remember who said yesterday that uh, drug policy is too important to 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 para dejárselo a los gobiernos, to leave it only to the governments. So, it's... Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yes, I remember Antonio Costa. Uh, and that and the premise continue to be exactly the, the, the same. Uh, um, and that's why I said yesterday that you have a really, really, really important, uh, important, um, let's say, obligation uh, as a representative of the civil society, and is to say things that governments do not want to hear. You know that uh, we are used in uh, in our meetings to be extremely polite, to be uh, extremely comprehensive with all other delegates, because at the end we depend on them to to have the decision. And you most probably heard me, uh, myself, and all the other chairs, all, all we referring to uh, the other delegates, distinguished delegate. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, everything like that, you know. And we, we each other said we, we said the the things, but not, but maybe not in the with the uh, strength that is needed. With the with the vision that is needed sometimes, because at the end we represent and we defend our national interest, and not every time the national interests of countries coincide with the global interest of mankind, of humankind. We can say now, we can say now, mankind, humankind. Um, so it's up to you to help us and to have a, a strong involvement, a part, be, a, to participate in everything, to to draw to draw uh, uh, papers, to present papers, to present ideas, uh, in order to at least to keep up to keep us uh, working, uh, reading what you are saying and trying to include in our national positions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We also look forward to collaborate with you in this process and thanks to Modalities Resolution, we will take our responsibility to be actively involved and uh, critical if necessary, but also positive. And we will say also nice things if there are. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure there will be also positive things to say, so we will also support uh, all positive uh, decisions. Uh, so, yeah, we, we are going to take this op uh, opportunity and responsibility and be active in this process. So we promise that as a Vienna Angel Committee. And the next question is from Civil Society Forum on Drugs in the EU. Uh, I hope Adria, no, Monica. Monica, the floor is yours. Well, after you have just said, Mr. Chair, there is not so much to add to this argument, but my question is this one. Do you have any updated information on how civil society will be able to follow and participate in the midterm review, particularly those who are not able to travel to Vienna, including organization with and without ECOSOX accreditation? Thank you. Thank you very much, Monica. The, the Commission, as I said, values the importance of ensuring meaningful participation of stakeholders including civil society organizations in the 2024 midterm review. We have last week reached the agreement on the informal consultation on the modality resolution, as I said before, which foresees a similar engagement for NGOs as was the case 
for the high level segment in 2014 and 2019. The text will be considered in plenary on the agenda 1811 tomorrow. Uh, in the thing, the sessions held in the pandemic, including the session this week, efforts have been made to facilitate video messages and even remote live participation, uh, in addition to the UN Web TV. Uh, similar options will be explored for the 2024 midterm review, subject to always availability of resources. This is one of the limitations that we have. The work this week has been organized on a conference platform in an effort to facilitate the remote participation as well as the, the interaction between participants in a meaningful way. There are uh, two more questions on participation. Um, I think the, those two questions are the answer is here also. One is uh, the RIA Institute and the other the Sloan Child Foundation. But if you want, I will read uh, again. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, we will skip this uh, question number seven because it's repetition from the from before. But uh, we have George online, so uh, from Slum Child Foundation from Kenya. So George, is it anything you want to add? What was already said uh, by the uh, Mr. Ambassador? George, the floor is yours. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I don't think I have much because much has been raised, but uh, I think the most important thing is uh, just to echo uh, the, the sentiment that he has raised, a close collaboration and a working relationship uh, that should be put in place to ensure that uh, we participate fully in the midterm review. Uh, because a lot of, uh, and I don't know, maybe as uh, as the chair, I don't know if this will be a question or a compliment. When there was a uh, uh, UNGAS review, I mean, a lot of state parties did their report, but uh, we, the civil society, were not involved. Uh, I think, and I hope this time around, when the countries or the state parties will be doing their review, they will give us an opportunity also to contribute towards what they are uh, putting together because we don't want to be the rebel civil society, but we want to be an all-inclusive civil society whereby we put all our heads together for the, bet for the best interest of the people that we are working with. So maybe as a chair, if uh, he will be able to give direction so that uh, uh, at the country level, the, civil so the, the state parties involve the civil so society where they're working with, we will have a very rich document that uh, when it will be presented uh, to the assembly, it will have all inclusive voices of uh, the civil society. Thank you. Um, thank you, um, George. George, yes. yeah. Thank you, George. Um, something, something to say. Um, obviously, independence of the civil society organization is something that is paramount in this work. So uh, I, I will never dare to uh, to say what to do to the uh, to the um, NGOs. Uh, the only thing that I could do is uh, a little of a piece of advice uh, based on my uh, on my experience, uh, and it's not up to the chair, a, any chair of the CND, to to say to the NGOs what to do. <laughs> you know, um, but um, the secretary wants to add something. Uh, in, in order to clarify better the, the, the answer and all the possibilities. And something that is important uh, for you to know is that we take, uh, we know how value are your, your participation and we took care of all your concerns, I hope, uh, uh, during the negotiation of the modality resolution in order to, to provide to you the best possible uh, uh, participation, the best uh, I, 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 th I think that um, my role is here to provide the possibilities and then you decided how to play with those possibilities and uh, with the framework that we that we set up. Uh, Joe, please. Thank you very much. Well, what we see is that certain countries have also representatives of NGOs in their own delegations. 
But that's, of course, uh, the prerogative, as Ambassador Ruiz Blanco was saying, from every uh, uh, every uh, individual like, like, uh, member state. Way. Yes. <laughs> um, and I mean, from a secretariat's perspective, I mean, we uh, will continue to work very closely with the Vienna NGO committee and also to uh, to explain that there are, of course, possibilities to provide uh, written papers. I have seen we have quite a long list of NGO papers also for the current session. That is, of course, uh, a very good way also to bring your views to the attention of member states. And then it's, of course, like in every UN body, ultimately the prerogative of member states to decide uh, what they want to, in a way, take on board when they start their own uh, uh, their own uh, final preparations for, for the midterm review. But as we will have also another, uh, or other rounds of thematic discussions in autumn, I think also here, we have seen a very broad range of NGOs participating, and that was very well appreciated also by uh, by member states. So especially now that there are also means to have NGOs working on the ground connected remotely that maybe in the past would not have helped always the possibility to travel to Vienna. Thank you. OK, thank you. Amy, please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just to follow up, because I think um, Michelle and I were talking about some of this um, some ideas around this and elsewhere in the United Nations, particularly in Geneva, there's actually processes where civil society can submit shadow reports as part of reviews of a country's position. Maybe maybe we could work with CND Secretariat around the autumn intercessionals to see if there could be some kind of mechanism where countries, where NGOs from countries could submit their perspectives on what's been happening since 2019 you know, not for formal consideration in the report, but but as as an input to the deliberations. It's something to take to think about. Thank you very thank you very much. Okay, we'll probably repeat the same question next <laughs> time, so to, to remind you. <laughs> <laughs> to, to think again about this issue. Okay, so yeah, the next question is from the Turkish Green Crescent Society from um, Turkey. So do we have a representative here or online? No, then I'm going to read this question. Uh, how would you say the effect of the increasing in-person participation in the 66 CND has been for civil society engagement to help shape the global drug control regime? Uh, thank you. Uh, the presence of civil society organizations has always enriched the discussions and debates of the CND, providing valuable insights from their work on the ground. Mm -hmm. Since the advent of the pandemic, the Commission has transi transitioned to hybrid meetings, um, combining in-person and online participation. And to facilitate and promote online participation, the Secretariat has invested in a customized online conference platform for our meetings, which enables virtual uh, networking and uh, one-stop shop for the Commission's meeting. However, remote participation can never replace in-person participation. It is complementary, and the Commission has observed a significant return of in-person participation in this 66th session. I have been informed by the Secretariat that the Commission has received a record number of over 150 side events this year, and around 78 events are organized by NGOs more than the whole. Most side events are organized, uh, are organized in a hybrid format or an in-person format, and a number of exhibitions are also organized by NGOs at the margins of this session. The in-person component of side events and exhibitions allows NGOs to build relationships and foster cooperation. I also wish to highlight that the online participation in, in place also provides participants, including representatives from their civil society organizations who are not able to participate in the session in person, the opportunity 
to meaningful engage in the work of the CND. Thank you very much. And uh, another question is from you, Trice, uh, and Ruby, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. The World Drug Report 2022 collected data on links between the current international approach on drugs and environmental outcomes. From your national perspective, how do you feel this evidence is being used in the planning, implementation, and crucially, evaluation of drug policies and programs? And what more could be done? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I, I will respond this question not, not in my national capacity, because I am not here as a Colombian ambassador, but as a chair of the, of the CND. Uh, and if you want, we could discuss the national part outside. Uh, the World Drug Report is a publication of UNODC which provides the basis for evidence-based policies and programs. Even though it is not a publication of the CND, it helps stakeholders uh, understand the dynamics and trends of the uh, World Drug Problem and the statistics and findings of the World Drug Report have been frequently referred by delegations in their discussions at the meetings of the CND. On June, 20, on June 28, 22, the Commission held a special event in commemoration of the United Nations International Day Against Drug Abuse and Drug Trafficking. During the event, the World Drug Report 22 was launched. The report presents an overview of the current trend on global drug markets and includes the latest information on drug use, production and trafficking, and includes for the first time a section with a, a specific fo focus on the impact of drugs on the environment. The nexus between drugs and environment has been brought to the attention of the Commission, and the Commission has taken the environmental aspect into consideration. For example, in 2021, CND thematic discussions on the follow-up of the 2019 Ministerial Declaration touched upon the nexus between drug trafficking and crimes that affect environment, deforestation, illicit cultivation, loss of natural resources, and impact on protected areas. In its resolution 65-1, entitled Promoting Alternative Development as a development-oriented drug, drug control strategy, taking into account measures to protect the environment, the Commission underscored the alternative, that alternative development programs should include measures to protect the environment at the local and uh, at the local level, and to consider the harmful impact of the illicit cultivation of crops used for the production of narcotic drugs on the environment. This year, Germany, Peru, and Thailand table a resolution entitled Promoting Alternative Development as a Development-Oriented Drug Control Strategy, taking into account measures to protect the, the environment and recognizing the rights of indigenous peoples for the consideration of the Commission. I also wish to inform you that an exhibition organized by Thailand this year focused on alternative development and environment. A side event entitled Aligning Drug Policy with Environmental Protection will be organized by the Transnational Institute with the support of Brazil, Colombia, and other stakeholders. Obviously, it is a big, big, big impact of the drug production on the, uh, on the environment. And that uh, impact, uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't know uh, how, many, how many times the World Drug Report has referred to that impact. But this is, it is something, something really, really important, and all countries have uh, should work uh, in order to solve to solve that 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 problem. Sometimes it's much uh, it's much broader the impact of uh, the the drug the illicit drug cultivation and drug production on the environment that even the deforestation or other purposes, uh, because at the end, the, the ones who are behind the drug trafficking have much money that the, the others that simply want a little bit of 
a little piece of land in order to cultivate for sustain subsistence or something like that. But they, they do not have that amount of money that the others have. So th this is one of the of the reasons why uh, the the impact of this illicit crop cultivation uh, has uh, has has on the on the environment of the of the countries that are affected by that, those activities. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. And the last question is from um, uh, Vienna NGO Committee on Drugs. But I was informed that for this year it's actually fixed, so it might be uh, yeah good to say, to say something about next year. We we were going to ask a question about UN Web TV. Um, and as you've already mentioned, it, it, this whole CND is being broadcast on UN Web TV, which is fantastic. So thank you very much for, for putting that in place. For those who might not know, that means that every session is publicly webcast, but is also recorded and archived. So somebody could watch the CND plenary next week or, you know, can come back and look at it in the future, which is fantastic. So, uh, sorry, yeah, cool. oh, sorry. Uh, you can use that instead of Netflix or something like that. Yeah. Any, exactly. Any time. Yeah. Yeah. Who needs? And it's free. Yeah. Uh, who need, who you don't need have to pay for plus. Yeah. Uh, it's free. Yeah. Sometimes it's much more interesting than Netflix. Yeah. Thank you very much. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. So um. So could that's, you, all, that's you, your next few weeks sorted out. Jamie. Actually. Jamie, could you? Could you? Could you delete that part of the yeah. of our, of our... <laughs> No, no, we are all transparent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so what I wanted to do is is take the opportunity to ask uh, a different question instead, um, which is to ask from your from your perspective. It's not really mentioned in the modalities, but is your expectation that there will also be a CND work plan of intercessionals going from 2024 all the way up to 2029? Because we have a work plan that goes from 2019 to this year, and obviously civil society has been very involved in that, and it's been a really good experience and a good opportunity for us. Has there been any discussion yet about what happens after 2024? Um, not yet. But if we are smart, it should be. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, uh, Jamie. Is the, shall we also ask about the passes for the next year? Yeah. So one of the things we did miss this year was the opportunity to pick up uh, passes on over the weekend, yeah. which and, and this is more a question for Joe than for the ambassador, I reckon. But um, and I understand we did talk about this in the Q and A that we had in February, and I understand it's again one of those issues of resources and 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 budget and things like this, but. Um, and it's also less of an issue for next year because we'll have a Thursday, Friday high level segment and then and then Monday to Friday. So it's probably less of an issue for next year. But going forward, I think, you know, the weekend passes is very important, particularly for those who fly in on the Saturday or Sunday. It meant that Monday morning was, <coughs> was intense uh, in the past mm -hmm. and must have actually been very unpleasant for the people working in the pass office as well. It was a, a busy morning. If it is a resource issue, we can help, you know, I think I just want to say that, you know, we we can do some outreach, some advocacy to to try and make that happen in the future. Not so much a problem, I think, for next year, but, but looking looking forward. Yeah, but Joe, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, this is a similar problem as the problem of that we had with the webcasting is that in a way this goes beyond the secretariat to the governing bodies. So the problem is not us not having or wanting to be here on Sunday. We actually are. But security is in the hands of security. I mean, the batches are in the hands of security. And those offices fall outside the substantive secretariat. And they are of the view that they do not have the resources to provide that service any longer. It was, by the way, the same for the webcasting and the, um, the uh, web TV. This is not really something that SGB as such can uh, make happen. I can tell you we are working around the clock and if we can, we very much value civil society. We can really make your participation easier. We will do it. 
but conference management, security, uh, all those parts are not, we, we do not have that budget. This is different than if you compare it to the agency here in Vienna or Unido that really also control the, the, the budget of those uh, supporting service, if I may say. So that is not the case. So um, we, I will raise that issue and we will see what can be done, but it falls beyond our control. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. We are just on time, a few minutes before plenary, so we will still be able to <laughs> to catch uh, the start of the plenary at 10. Uh, so we are very uh, happy and it was a pleasure for us to uh, have uh, having you here uh, in our informal dialogue and we look forward to have you uh, to have uh, CND chairs also in the future uh, in our uh, at, at our meetings and also we would like to say thank you for uh, the modalities uh, resolution and um, ensuring really strong uh, um, strong uh, um, mentioning in the uh, civil society in the final draft uh, and also first time in the history I think Vienna NGO committee is uh, mentioned in the uh, in such re resolution so thank you very much for your support and we look forward to collaborate with you in in, in the future thank you thank you very much and uh, uh, we count on your support and on your work thank you very much